What's going on YouTube? Today I've got a special one for you. We've got a first production Shir Goroff Stellar. Uh, these were recently launched last week, I believe, if uh, I do in fact get this video up on time. And I wanted to show you this knife and kind of compare it with a couple other of the Shir Goroff knives in the lineup um, prior to actually uh, getting this one shipped out. So Let's get into it. As always, I just want to remind you, this is a super casual conversation, showing the knife, not going into super details about, um, you know, edge ratios and yada, 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 and measurements and all that. It's just a show you the knife, check it out, see what you think, get some actual real world uh, images of it. And uh, you know, you kind of get what you uh, take away from it. So let's get into it. Here's the knife. Beautiful, beautiful uh, knife itself. Um, as we can kind of see, um, let's let's kind of go for sizing first, because I have the tape measure here that's just hanging around. So this is kind of their first production mid-size. So I want to say blade length, depending on how you're looking at the angle of the tape measure, you're at three and three quarters, I'd say, sharpened. Is that about right? Maybe a little less. 5 eighths ish, uh, which is cool. And then eight and a quarter, eight and three eighths, kind of in that range overall length, which is uh, an absolute beautiful overall length. Uh, now this one has not been flipped a whole lot, so I'm gonna kind of warn you in advance that it's buttery smooth. <laughs> but it has not broken in, so it's definitely one that's gonna uh, grow, on, grow, on, uh, over, grow on you over time. In terms of lineup size, I'm going to zoom this guy out just a hair to kind of show where it fits in the line with some of the other Shira Goroff knives. Uh, first and foremost, we will grab the beautiful Turtle F95T, which is uh, just an absolute classic. I'm trying not to bump these guys. That's the size up. We also have the 111, which is a one more size up from this guy. Um, you know, big jump there, not so much between these two. And then when we go down the other direction, we have a Neon Zero, which is a nice uh, smaller EDC, but once again, not, not massive, not uh, too big, but they're certainly not small. Just a real good all-arounder. So it kind of fits in the lineup right between basically the Neon, and the F95 or the Quantum, whatever one you prefer is, it's a real good size. It's a real, real good size. Uh, you'll notice the handles are actually very similar. Uh, and I've seen some overlays of this uh, and that it looks just like an F3, kind of ergonomically, which unfortunately I don't have my F3 anymore, but that would have been a great comparison to show. Um, and then blade length, I believe it's 90 mils versus 95. So not a whole lot shorter, but just from an EDC standpoint, a real, real nice size. So excellent sizing all around. And I think with that, it's going to be hot. So let's compare that with a couple of Chris Reeves that I have here as well. So we'll do the small Sebenza on the bottom. <clears throat> and I will grab the trustworthy large Sebenza up top. There's your Chris Reeve comparison, and I like to kind of show it compared to the middle of the knife for size. So kind of, uh, I wouldn't even say in between, it's more of a large Sebenza than anything in that regard. Now compared to other knives in this category uh, that people know about, we would probably do the Rosie, which everybody knows what a Rosie is, I think, these days. Uh, super, super common knife. We will compare it with the Stang Blade Works <clears throat> Pyrenees, which is a V3. Uh, there you go. Another great size comparison. Also a terrific knife. A little bigger, as you can see. This versus that. And what else would we got that's local here? In the uh, Russian category, we could probably do an Evo. <sighs> Let's do an Evo, a lot more cleavery, but size-wise, overall, kind of similar in that regard. So there's your Evo. 
And then the Grimsmo's, because everybody loves a Grim Grimsmo. We'll do both the Rask, which is actually, looking on camera, it looks very similar. Uh, but I'll say the Stellar is a little chunkier in width. And a Norseman. So there's some Canadian comparisons, which are always good. Okay, I think that's all I'm going to give you for comparisons because that is enough. And I don't think we have a whole lot else to compare. Okay, so that's a knife. So let's, let's get started on this one, though. So a couple things. What's so cool about this knife, other than it's kind of a first production uh, of their typical custom and custom division knives? Well, it's mid-size, so it's between the Neon and it's between the 95mm uh, variants, which is super common, super popular, both sizes, everyone loves them. Okay? There's more to it than that, though. What's so cool is when they launch a new knife, a lot of the things they've learned in their custom division line tends to kind of trickle down into their production. And uh, this being no exception. So now, I believe, we've got a captive pivot system, which means that this doesn't spin all over the place, which is awesome. It just makes kind of putting the knife together easier. It's a multi-row bearing system knife which should be, I'm not looking at it, but it should be written on the inside of here. Uh, it's got to do this off camera to see, but where is it? Oh, it's on the tip here. That's interesting. Uh, typically, there's a little, I think on the customs, that's where there's a signature. So they moved it down to the tip. So I'll show that here with my little night or my little light. So they see that in the top there? The little MRBS right at the hardware. So they moved that labeling there instead of on a lot of the other stuff that's up here. That's kind of cool. Nice little feature, nice little Easter egg, moving things around. Um, rest of the knife, because this is the first production, they've uh, kind of given it the, the royal treatment. So when they do that, they typically give it a cool blade. And in this case, they went S90V which is a great steel, everyone loves S90V, and um, I'm guessing future iterations of this will probably be M390, but um, you know, it's kind of cool, these first production runs, they always do something special with them, and uh, I think a lot of people are gonna like S90V. It's just, uh, it's usually reserved for their special editions, I find, or um, yeah, I guess their special editions, like the F3 Terrace, or uh, some of the F95s. It's just, it's cool. It's super cool that they're able to do that on this one. As we know, multi-row bearings are kind of their bread and butter lately. They've been putting it in everything. And uh, I still love single row bearings. I still have a place for it in my heart and love single row bearings. They're smooth. Multi-row bearings are just those, but just a little tiny bit more friction, I'd say, on the blade. But over time, they break in real nice and smooth. This particular one, they've obviously gone with kind of an anodizing color. They call it, uh, I think, like blue-purple. I don't know if I see a whole lot of purple on it. I certainly see some blues and some bronzes. So when we move the light around here, uh, two things. I've got natural light coming in from one side and a huge uh, light above this set to, uh, I think, 5100 Kelvin. So it's very natural daylight color. And I'm getting a lot of kind of bronze a little bit of blues, a little tiny bit of purple maybe, depending on the light. Um, it's just a real nice overall color. It hides that bright blue anno well, I'd say, that some knives like to do. And they've just touched it ever so slightly so you get the golds and whatnot. Uh, beautiful clip, as you can see. And with that, you can see all the little light machining work that they've done on this one. And in the light, you should be able to see a bunch of it, all the little lines that go up and down. Now, another thing here. This is a production level knife, but I think they've done some work on this that is over and above their production level that I've kind of seen in the past. And things like, when we look at the top here on this scale, you know, you see these nice big cut lines that just look terrific and give you these nice swoopy ergo lines. 
But then you kind of look back towards the other side here, just in front of the backspacer, and it's all micro milled. That's something I wasn't expecting. And the same can be said actually on the lock bar. If it wants to ever focus, there's all these really, really fine lines on here that I really wasn't expecting. Like, look at here. I don't know how close I can get without it freaking out, but it's all micro milled and looks stunning. Absolutely stunning. Now, if we compare this with a custom division, Stellar, you can see, you know, it's, it's, you are comparing uh, the same design, same size in a lot of ways. I don't know on the actual blade. Uh, that might be a little fatter. Uh, maybe not. I don't know. You know, if you're comparing the two on a custom versus production, it, it's, it's, first of all, it's a non-starter. Um, they're totally different in fit and finish, I would say. Just the tolerances on the custom are much higher. But in terms of if you blindfolded someone and you put it in their hand, they feel identical. Honestly, um, you know, this has a little more luxury to it, some bells and whistles and whatnot, but that's kind of where it ends. They are the same size, same pocket clip location. Or not pocket clip, sorry, well that too, but uh, lanyard hole. Everything about them is so similar. And on the reverse side, you can see they utilize essentially the same clip. Essentially, they're not the same but essentially the same clip. A little less detail, but we're still, it's micro milled, man. And there's still a ton of detail. This is not what I was expecting. I was expecting kind of a smooth clip. See the cutout below as well? Below the clip? It's, it's like a mirror image in a lot of ways. Let's get this off, it's kind of freaking out. So as we can see, look at all that micro milling beneath the clip. And you can see the lines. I love seeing those lines. That to me is part of the part of the appeal. Now the one thing that you don't really get, um, I believe the way they mount there, I think on the inside, you'd really have to open it up and see them internally to see how they kind of put it all together. That's where the big differences are gonna be. Uh, let's see under here. Screw under that clip, yeah. Everything's screwed still internally from this knife. Under the clip, there's a couple screw heads that pop up, which means that, if, you know, once again, it's tough, tough to show this stuff, but on the inside, there's some screws that go internally into the back of this inset lock bar, I imagine, holds it in internally instead of going external, which is awesome. Uh, lock up, very light on both actually. And I will compare that because that'd be a nice little thing that you'd probably want to see. For reference, left is the uh, production, but lock up. Very, very similar on both, which is nice. They've done a real good job of actually maintaining the design between the two. And that's the main thing to take away from this is that, you know, when you have a custom division, uh, you're able to do more in a lot of cases with the fit and finish and kind of making it more blingy and more dressy. But when you get some cool new technologies, you're able to apply it to a production design that really uh, adds value to the end user. And I really think they've done a lot, a really good job with that. Now, backspacer wise, we're actually, ooh, we're actually very, very similar here in the backspacer. Uh, which is surprising if we're looking at this because usually you get like a 2D, I think, you usually get like a 2D machine backspacer and uh, this guy's looking very nice and actually looking a little more finished than uh, some of the other backspacers. Like here's the, tur the Turtle F95, very simple finishing and they've done a very nice job on this one. I would, you know, an F950 would have been a better comparison, but usually you get like on their current CDs, you can kind of see the level of detail in the backspacer, right? They've done a great job for a production knife. It's definitely pushing the limits, I'd say, of, uh, of what I've seen on a production Shiro Goroff. 
Now, I wish I could open this one up and show you on the inside what I'm looking at, but uh, it's just so hard to show, and I don't have... Uh, I need to get like a little mini flashlight, honestly, because that's the only way the camera's going to not freak out. But it is all internally milled, because of that backspace or the light's going to be blocked. Man, I'm brutal today. Just brutal. But it is all internally milled on the inside. Looks nice and sharp. And uh, there's nothing to really gripe at or sniffle at here. It's all very, very well done. Um, in terms of, let's see here, what do we got? Yeah, all nice. All, they've done a lot of work on the inside of that. My God. That's beautiful. You know, when I first went into Sure Go Offs, the, the main appeal was their production line because of all these little details. And sometimes I forget, like, their production line is just, you know, compare it with anything. Compare it with most people's customs. And it's still at a whole other level. Pocket clip-wise, you know, you're looking at about that much sticking out, which is perfect, because you still have access to that beautiful hole, which is all milled. Ooh, look at this. Look at these lines coming across here. It's all milled around that uh, lanyard hole. Hopefully, uh, hopefully, I am filming in 4K, so hopefully you can see that detail. I can't see it because I'm looking at a one inch screen, but I'm hoping the camera picks up those lines. That just looks absolutely stunning. And if I am correct, which I'm usually not, is that a different color? That might be a bronze wash on the clip, which would match the back spacer, or am I just seeing that in a different light? I'm not too sure, but uh, yeah, maybe it is a stone washed. Maybe it's not anodized on the backspacer. It's so hard to tell, but just because the light. But yeah, you know what? I'm thinking the clip and the backspacer match. So I'm guessing it's a stone wash bronze kind of color, which looks good. In terms of ergonomics and action, remember I'm uh, extra large hand, and I've still got that beautiful Shergoroff logo just singing out lots of room for my hand i think uh you know a medium large extra large hand is not going to have any problems with this this is like a goldilocks size beautiful blade length jimping the one thing that i will say i don't have the stellaris to show this but the stellar was always known to have this weird jimping on the top here um you know they still haven't changed that and i'm kind of surprised if you look at the blade there's a little indentation here on the custom division version that has been lost on here. Um, and, and in my review of that, I would probably discuss that the lack of jimping, but they've made up for it with a little cutout for your thumb that's ever so slight. Personally, if I'm holding this, you know, close my eyes, put my hand on the blade, it still falls above the jimping. It's, it, but if you look at the angling here, you can kind of see that your thumb naturally falls up to about there, and then the blade shape curves down with this beautiful swage. Ooh, blade. It's so crazy, it hides how slicey it is based on this. Hopefully you can see the swaging on here. Oh man, it hides it very, very well. Looks terrific. Now, one of the things that, you know, I'm sure is purely aesthetic is that this nice little cutout in the top here. You can kind of see you've got an angle down, we've got an angle up top, and then we've got that little cutout here. I, I can't see an actual physical need for that, other than it kind of just kind of goes with the flow of the knife. And if you kind of blur your eyes and you look at the, you blur the handle, the, the machining up here, you can kind of see how they're, they're kind of continuing that form onto the blade. And that looks sharp, looks cool. The, uh, the flipper tab cutout is something that you're starting to see on all their, on all the F95s. And it's just such a natural, soft, rounded, smooth area for your finger to drop when you do fire it up. No sharp points, nothing like that, just smooth. Smooth all around. Ergonomically, sure go offs are the best, honestly. And just hold one, just go pick one up. Hold one of these in your hands and you'll be like, yep, I know what he's talking about. 
they feel so good. The one thing the Stellar does that I'll say the uh, the Neon and the F95s and the Quantums don't do is the handle. It almost feels, because of the curve of it, you can kind of see, once again, kind of blur your eyes a little bit. You can kind of see, as you go down, it angles up at the tip. There's a, a definite angling up here that the others don't have. So you feel locked into this one a lot more than the other knives, in my opinion. When you put it in your hand, it, it might not look it because of this machine work, but it definitely feels curved on the heel of the blade, or of the handle, the heel of the handle of the blade. I notice that right away. When it's in your hand, it just locks you right in. And that's a good thing. That's a, that's a beautiful feeling. Now my question is, because they made a Stellaris custom division and a Stellar of the custom division, will they make a Stellaris production? Will the, and, and conversely, will it be full carbon or will it be like the Hattie that is carbon front and titanium on the back? I'm very curious about that because from a size perspective, this is the perfect EDC. Perfect. It's bigger than the Neon, which some people say is a little small, and it's smaller than the 95, which some people say is a little big. Personally, I find the 95 is perfect. It's a Goldilocks size. And it's kind of funny, the Gold Goldilocks and the Three Bears. Uh -huh. Three Bears, sure, grow off. I, I never made that connection. But it's a Goldilocks size. And uh, I'm curious if they punch some weight out of this, because it's it's not light, but it's not heavy. It's a little over four ounces, four and a quarter, I think, uh, is what they publish it at. 4.3, there you go, is what they publish this at. And um, it's, not, it's not heavy. It's certainly not a six ounce knife or anything like that. But I'm wondering if they make it out of carbon, on one side even, I wonder what that would be like. Now you're getting into bug out territory with that, not in terms of just everyday carryability. Now, the other thing that uh, I really dig as well, comparatively, is I like how they're going away from stamping the blade with the, the logo, with the sheer gore off. I really dig how they're starting to put that right on the handle. And that's something that just, from a longevity point of view, that's gonna be something that, you know, you know five years from ownership, you're still going to have that logo on there. It's going to be smooth. Whereas if you're using the blade, it's just one of those spots that you're going, oh, I hope it doesn't wear off. Because uh, it just, you know, you want it to look good. And I think that's a great spot to hide it. As I showed you earlier, your fingers aren't going to be on top of that. Extra large gloves, you're not even touching that logo. It's just, it's just a, a smart choice. An absolute smart choice to do that. Now, what else can we talk about on this one? Uh, it's sharp. It's very, very sharp. And I don't know if that's a... Uh, I don't know if that's because it's a first production thing. But that's taking... That's taking my nail off without even trying. So, very sharp blade. Sure, go off. They are very sharp knives. I'm not uh, too worried about that. Centering, well, you be the judge. Um, yeah, it's centered. Maybe I'll show it this way. It's dead center, and the tolerance is there. Ooh, against that backspacer. You're starting to get into custom division territory here with the tolerances on this. Honest to goodness. Wow. And it's funny here how as this video is going on, it's starting to almost show some more blues and the light's hitting it, and then it changes to some titanium colors and then some bronzes. I've never had a knife like this, where it's changing color so much. It's just like hit with just enough anodization to give it that little bluey purple kind of look, but not enough to really make it that color full time. Like it's, it's very muted, at least my model is, and, and I don't know if they're all like this, or if they're all supposed to be super blue or all supposed to be lighter than this, it's a very muted color. And I'm hoping the way I set the light up, you can kind of see the true color because I'm looking at the screen and I'm looking at the knife in front of me and that is as close to the color as I can get it to be true representation of it. But it is very subtly blue and the pictures of it make it seem like it's a blue knife and it's not. 
The multi-row bearings are as silky smooth as possible, and we can do the test that I like to do, where I put the blade in a fashion like this, and I like to be able to park it so that the blade will not just drop shut. And I always give it a little angling so that the tab has a place to go, but I'm not moving the knife. And the, the entire way down, it's not dropping on its own, and I'm just touching it. And to give you a level of sensitivity, look at this. There you go. Shiro's just kind of float. They just float. It's the best way I can describe it. And that's going to get smoother with time. And this is a, I'd say, um, this particular example of multi row bearings is one of the better that I've had. And that it'll just gently drop down. It's, it's a, a very uh, smooth multi row bearing example. And hopefully, the extra mic that I have down in the corner there picks up some of these sounds. You know, people always ask about that. They want to experience the blade, which I understand. Um, absolutely terrific example of a knife. And the one thing I'm just looking at on this backspacer, how they tie this all together. I'm going to take it one more look inside of this. It's almost like a floating backspacer in a lot of ways. Interesting. I wish I could open this up and show you, but unfortunately I don't think that is in the cards for this particular, this particular one. But um, I would love to see what the internals of this thing look like opened up. Because it is just a work of art everywhere else. And sure, Goroff, they're known to, uh, at least from my, my perspective, they're known to kind of show you the details that, uh, or the details are where you'd least expect them. Where everyone else cuts corners, they're like, ah, you know what, I'm going to throw some absolutely pimp milling in here. So it looks good. Another thing, I don't know if this is on the... Uh, that little indent, is that the same? No, it is, yeah. Wrap myself around here. If you wanted to pause and study similarities, I thought this little dip here was a little different than here, but no, it's, it's identical. Identical all around, absolute stunning knife. Like, just look at how all the little details are almost emulated perfectly between the two. The smoothness around the edges, the thickness of the whole design, the jimping. It's just really well done. It's uh, an absolute incredible example of a production duplication of a custom division knife. And I'm curious to see, um, here's the speculation part of me, uh, what we're going to see coming down the pipe with this design. So because it's a first run, I'm assuming this will be the only one. Uh, aside from perhaps special editions that will utilize that S90V blade, um, because that's special. So what are we going to see? Well, I'm assuming it'll be M390 for majority of production. This, I would imagine, is their highest end finish on a uh, production line, and that future iterations, you know, may lose some of this milling. Maybe they'll add some milling to it in a different different spot, or they'll make it smoother. Or maybe, who knows, maybe we'll see a single row bearing inlay version down the road at a few hundred dollars less with Chromax. Um, I can only assume that's just a natural progression of things that they would want to do. Uh, and I would be on board for an NL version because I love the NL versions of the F95. They are unbelievable. Even though the price point is a little bit cheaper. It's People assume automatically that it's less of a knife and I actually think it's one of the best F95 versions they make. But you guys are gonna love this thing. And I'm almost artificially trying to talk to kind of keep some dead space here but show you the knife and show you all the angles and all the lines that they do here around the tab and how smoothly it's finished and just you know, you should see every single inch of this knife, I hope, by the end of this video. And hopefully you're salivating, because I am. I have to keep a Kleenex beside me, just for the salivation, and nothing else. Okay, well anyway guys, that is the Stellar production, first production. And I'm excited to kind of show you some comparisons of that knife with some of the other... Uh, 
other knives in the future here, but for the for this particular one, it's going to a new home. And uh, I will still have, obviously, the Stellar Custom Division version, which is, as you can see, identical in almost every way, and still different in almost every way, which is kind of fun, um, just from that perspective. But appreciate you guys stopping by. I'm probably half an hour in, and uh, still rambling on about a knife that I love. But uh, absolute work of art, and some of the best in the business. And if I can say that a hundred more times, I can't get my point across. Okay, guys, if you have any questions, leave them below. I read every single one. Otherwise, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And until next time, we'll catch you later. See ya.